Welcome to the presentation titled Concealed Communication in Online Social Networks. My name is Fabian Schillinger and I'm with the Chair of Computer Networks and Telematics at the Department of Computer Science at the University of Freiburg. Let's talk about privacy in online social networks. We have around 4.2 billion active social media users that use their accounts on average around two and a half hours daily. With the users sharing information, images and videos with each other, there's a lot of information about the users generated. And all this information is very interesting for advertising to tailor the advertisements even more to the users to gain more profit. And the operators of an online social network typically know everything about a the user. They see all the profile fields, they see when they communicate they see with whom they communicate and they can even read private messages within groups or between users. And apart from the this legal information generation and collection, there are often some collections of hijacked accounts for sale, maybe through phishing attacks or through some malicious third-party plugins for the online social networks and this is not very good for the users and they don't like the idea that their information is given away and then that they cannot decide who sees which information and therefore often users change their, their network, their using behavior, they change to different online social networks that tend to be more private and tend to protect the user's privacy. But even when the communication is, is encrypted or is more private and cannot be analyzed by the operators of an online social network, there can be the metadata that is generated when communicating in such a network that can be analyzed. So for example, we have the, an analysis of some Facebook data set of Mr. et al. in 2010. And they found out that friends share common attributes in some online social network. And there are circles formed by these common attributes and from the common attributes we can predict circles and from circles we can predict people's attributes. Perez et al. performed an analysis of Twitter tweets in 2018 and each tweet has around 144 fields of metadata and they were able to predict which users posted which tweet with an accuracy of over 96%. Ayello et al. performed an analysis of the datasets of Flickr, Last.fm and Anubi and they found out that users with many contacts are more active in an online social network and again they found some patterns of topic similarity between the neighbors so you tend to be a friend with somebody that shares the similar topics as you. And finally they used the node degree, so how many contacts do user have, the neighbor degree, how many contacts do the neighbors have, and the average amount of groups a user is participating in to predict social links in these networks. And even when the communication is encrypted, some analysis of the traffic is still possible. So Conti et al. performed an analysis of encrypted TLS SSL traffic in 2016. <coughs> and they saw the network flow as some time series patterns. So if a user tries to do something in an online social network, the packages that are sent by, by the device are encrypted and have a specific pattern. And with these patterns they were able to predict the user's actions 
just from analyzing the encrypted traffic. So from these and other findings, we can compile a list of possible metadata leaks. So even with encrypted communication, um, the privacy can still be attacked. So there's, for example, an analysis of the structure of the network where we can analyze the degree of a node, how many friends do users have, or how many, how many contacts do they have. And the neighbors of a node, so how many neighbors do the neighbors have, and <coughs> are there common neighbors within a group. And then they can, we can analyze the structure of the data. So we can analyze the count of some objects, how many pictures or groups or keys do users have. Uh, we can analyze common objects. So are there common objects between different users or common groups and common keys? We can analyze the size of objects. So for example, smaller objects may be some text and lar larger messages can contain images or videos. And of course we can analyze the history of objects. So how often do uh, objects change or groups or keys? And from these history analysis we can find, for example, that some user changed their password or their their contacts. So they, they were new friends with somebody or they excluded someone from the friendships. Further, there are leaks about the timing. So we can analyze time series patterns. Um, we can analyze the timing for the object creation and key distribution. So when is an object generated and who gets some keys for these objects? and the key distribution and re-encryption. For example, if, if some object is re-encrypted with a new key and the key is distributed, we can, we can see that the access group changed for some objects. And of course, there are some control information like IP addresses that can be logged. So even if everything, everything is anonymous, when we see the same IP address accesses different nodes, then we know that the nodes are connected. There's some GeoIP mapping possible where the locations of some IP addresses can be analyzed. And of course, if there are access logs for objects, then these can be analyzed as well. And there most likely are some control messages for queries. So the login of user or the user searching for other users or for some images can be analyzed. So to pre prevent the analysis, analysis of such information, we created an online social network which is relaying, relating, um, which is using the some concealed addresses. A concealed address is just a random address at the server. And these addresses can contain any messages. And messages can be read by authorized users or can be added by authorized users. So a concealed address can be used to exchange messages. For example, user A writes a message and a user B reads the message from the same address. And these addresses can be accessed with some address actions, like a read address action, write address action, or other address actions. So the address authorization is very important. If we have random addresses, then everybody would be able to open them and read them or write messages to them. It would be a huge chaos. So for every message, for every address, there are three different keys. 
PR is a key to verify that a user is allowed to read messages. PW is to verify that the user is allowed to write messages and PO is to verify that the user is allowed to modify the address. And those three keys are just public keys of a digital signature algorithm. And when we have some public keys, then of course there are some private keys as well. And these are SR, SW and SO which are just the corresponding pri uh, private keys. So for PR, the corresponding private key is SR. And the public keys belong to the address. And then the server can verify that the user is allowed, for example, to read messages when the appropriate address action assigned with the private key and the server just uses the public key to verify the signature. So because from the public key nobody can calculate or should be able to calculate this, the private key, um, if a user can sign a message with the private key then he must be authorized to for example read a message or write messages. But still, at this moment, an address can be it can be locked. Who is accessing a message, or who is accessing an address? Who's writing with whom? And still, there's no privacy in this online social network. So to create privacy and to prevent the metadata links that we thought about earlier we can generate concealed channels. So for a concealed channel, a user can provide an address with an empty write address key. So everybody can write messages to the address. Then the user collects all the messages and forwards them to other addresses. So a user writes a message to some address and the receiving user is just forwarding the address to somebody else. And by writing these messages, a sender of a message can choose a path to a final address by predefining which addresses are used in the path. And a sender can choose a response path. So the sender can, can choose which stations are used in between when the response is generated. And by using the, the signatures and the private and public keys to verify the user actions, any address can be accessed over some concealed channel. When a user wants to read messages from a concealed channel, defines some stations in between for the request and some stations in between for the response. And it is way more complicated to track which user is accessing which address. But still, with an overview of the whole network, as the operators have, it would be possible to track which user is accessing which address. Therefore, we choose to use the private, uh, the public keys of users to send messages. So when a user sends a message, it uses just a public key of the re of the receiver to encrypt the message, and nobody else can decrypt the message. And when we encrypt messages of encrypted messages, we can conceal the communication we can create finally a concealed channel. So for example, when we have a message M and a rece receiver R and two nodes in between N1 and N2, the sender encrypts a message M for R and then it encrypts this message for N2 with just the receiver message of 
a receiver address of R in this encrypted message. And this encrypted message then is encrypted for node N1. So any node can then decrypt a part of the message and forward the message. So for example, if the last message arrives at, at node N1, and N1 decrypts the message and nobody else is able to decrypt the message, and then the message contains a tuple of an encrypted message and the address of node N2. And then N1 knows to forward the, the encrypted message to node N2. Then again, node N2 can decrypt the message. And inside of the message, it knows that the next recipient is R and it forwards the message to R. So node N1 doesn't know that the message that he sent to N2 is has the target R. And node R doesn't know that the message was sent over N1. It just received the message from N2. So if we have send messages around over these stations, we can exchange symmetric keys between the stations and use these for further communication such that the communication is faster. So when we have these com concealed channels, we can create for example a chat room where two or more users communicate. So we just create an address, some address keys and a symmetric key which is used for the content and then we share with the participants over some concealed channel the address, the address keys and the symmetric key. And all the recipients then can write messages to the address and read messages from the address. If we want to change the participants, for example, we want to add a new participant, we just share the keys which are needed over a private concealed channel and the new participant then can read and write messages to the channel. If we want to remove a participant, then the keys should be changed. So all the newer communication after removing a participant cannot be accessed by the participant. To achieve this we change the keys and share them like in the beginning when we created the address of a com concealed communication channels as private messages. So all the new participants or all the remaining participants have the new keys and the removed participant does not receive the keys. And so after P1 and P3 acknowledged the new keys at t equals 5, the user can set, the user P0 can set the new keys as R1 and as W1. So after t equals 5, new keys are set for reading and writing messages to the channel. The next functionality which is possible are user profiles. And a user can just create one concealed address and collect all the profile information on this concealed address. And everybody that uses or that knows the concealed address can access the profile information. But again the, the server could read all the concealed addresses and analyze the data. Therefore, a user can collect similar information in linked addresses. So for example, block entries of a user can be stored in a concealed address which is linked inside of the profile concealed address. And further, collections can be collected in linked addresses. For example, um, 
an address containing all the photo albums of a user and every photo album has a new common address. So for example, take a look at this picture. On the left hand side, in the upper part we have the profile of a user which has the name sample user and the user has some entries um, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and all these entries are encrypted where 1, 2, 3 and 4 are encrypted with some key which has a key ID and the entry 5 is encrypted with a symmetric key so if the user shares the symmetric key for information at entry 5 it can be decrypted by all the users or by the users that know the symmetric key and then they can decrypt, decrypt it and see the keys of the profile are stored in address v05rj then they can uh, access the address and uh, this address and access the keys but again in the address on the left hand side in the lower part all the keys are encrypted again with uh, some symmetric key and here again the keys have to be exchanged with the users that want to access these. So if the user was able to decrypt the entry 5 at the, at the user profile, it knows the symmetric key PS2 and it can decrypt the entries of the key IDs and the addresses. So if the user wants to access the key ID K1, it knows it has to access the address O2 VOJ a VOY and therefore the user then accesses this address and inside these addresses inside the address all the keys are encrypted with the public keys of the users and the private keys are able to decrypt the entries so for example the user that has the the key corresponding to e 7C5T03 can decrypt the first entry and then it can uh, it knows the key E1 and with E1 it can decrypt in the profile field the, fir the first, the second and the third entries and with the third entries uh, with the fourth entries there are the postings of a user. The postings are again in a linked address H86PA. Then the user that wants to access the profile can access the linked address and again all the contents are encrypted. And by the user that accessed the key K1 it can also decrypt the first entry, the first posting content which has the key ID K1. So when using this scheme a user can determine which user is allowed to add to receive which keys. All he has to do is share the symmetric key which allows other users to decrypt the key addresses. And within the, the table of the key addresses, all the keys can be linked. And finally, all the, the keys can be encrypted with the public keys of the users. And this would allow to delete the encrypted parts to remove the access for some users. So, thank you for your attention.
Hi everyone, this is Niu Sun Chen from Michigan Tech. My talk today is MobiWare, a plausibly deniable encryption system for wearable mobile devices. This is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Bo Chen from Michigan Tech and Dr. Wei Song Shi from Wayne State University. This is the outline of my presentation. Mobile devices are everywhere in our life. We have smartphones, tablets, or smartwatches. We use those mobile devices to share photos, send messages to our friends, or to manage our online banking. Wearable devices such as smartwatches or Google Glass are becoming a dominant category in mobile devices. They are often used as general computing devices or fitness tracker and embedded with a few sensors like accelerometers, gyroscopes, or heart rate sensors. Compared to other mobile devices, wearable devices often have the limited computational capability. With the increased use of wearable devices, more and more sensitive data are also processed in wearable devices. Therefore, how to protect confidentiality of data in wearable devices is a problem. The most popular method is using encryption. Encryption can be divided into two categories, full disk encryption and file-based encryption. However, encryption can only defend against a passive attacker who tries to retrieve sensitive information from the data storage. It is vulnerable to coercive attacks. Coercive attack means the attacker coerces the device owner to disclose the key and to get the sensitive information. For example, in order to get the key, an attacker may threaten the user to force him to disclose the key. Therefore, in order to defend against a coercive attack, plausibly deniable encryption is proposed. It works as follows. The plain text is encrypted with two keys, a decoy key and a true key. When cipher is decrypted with the decoy key, we will get the decoy message. And when cipher is decrypted with the true key, we will get true message. The user can disclose the decoy key upon being coerced and keep the true key. In this way, sensitive data can be protected. Currently, there are several PDE works. In this table, I list some of them. As you can observe from the table, for the desktop computer and the smartphone, there are already many PDE works designed for them. The technique they use are hidden volume or stagnographic file system. But for the wearable device, there is no existing PDE work. Therefore, our work aims to design a PDE framework which can suit the hardware nature of wearable devices. Next, I will introduce some background. Image stagnography is often used to hide information in a cover image. As you can see in this picture, secret data are stored invisibly in a cover image and generates a stack image. This stack image then can be sent to other party where the third party does not know that this stack image has hidden message. After receiving the stack image, secret data can simply be extracted with the key by the receiver. Currently, image stagnography can be performed in two domains, special domain and the transform domain. Compared to special domain, transform domain is more computational intensive, which is not suitable for mobile devices. Therefore, we mainly focus on the special domain. In special domain, the most popular technique is least significant bit technique. The core idea of LSB technique is, in an ARGB image, each pixel can be represented by four channels. Here, as you can see, RGB means the value of red, green, and blue, respectively. A means the transparency. Each channel is one bit. The last bit of each bit is called least significant bit since its value only has a small effect of the pixel value. Therefore, this property can be used to hide sensitive data. Here is a simple example. Suppose we want to hide the letter A 
into an image by using LSB technique. First, we transfer A to binary form. The result is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And for each pixel, we use four channels to represent it. Therefore, we need at least two pixels to embed this letter. Then we had the secret data in the last bit of each bit. This is how LSB works. Image diagnography can be applied in several situations. Digital watermarking is one of its applications. Digital watermarking is often used to identify the ownership of the copyright. It contains two types, visible watermarking and invisible watermarking. As you can see, the left image has a visible watermarking, which can be used to claim ownership of the picture. On the right side, there are two pictures. One is the original image, and the other one is embedded with some text by using the LSB technique. It is very hard for the human to detect the difference between those two images. Therefore, the ownership can be protected. The next part is models and assumptions. This is our system model. We consider a wearable device, and this is its architecture. It can be divided into three parts, application layer, operating system layer, and flash storage. We are all, all very familiar with the application layer. Some applications, such as Google Chrome or Google Maps, are deployed in this layer. Below the application layer is the operating system layer. In this layer, operating systems, such as Android or Wear OS, are built in this layer. The last part is the flash storage. Currently, wearable devices use flash memory as the external storage to manage flash memory. A block-based access interface and a flash translation layer are built on top of the raw flash. Our design is built in application layer since it is easy to deploy. This is our attack model we have a few assumptions about the attacker. We assume that the attacker will stop coercing the victim once the key is disclosed. We assume the attacker cannot capture a victim when he or she is in PDE mode. Otherwise, sensitive data are disclosed. We also do not consider the code security. We assume that the operating system, firmware, or bootloader are malware free. The attacker is able to obtain both the original cover image and the stagger image. For example, the device owner may purchase the cover image from others, and therefore the attacker can also purchase it. The stagger image can be easily obtained once the wearable device is captured. The attacker can perform some analysis on those images, but the attacker is not able to obtain the original watermark image. Based on those assumptions, we proposed our design, MobiWare. We have two key insights. The first one is we use image stagnography to hide sensitive data. Hidden volume-based technique and the stagnographic file system require filling randomness to the device initially, which relies on the assumption that this behavior is normal. Since we use image stagnography, therefore, our solution does not rely on this assumption. The second key insight says the sensitive data are denied as the watermarks embedded into images. In our design, true key is used to hide sensitive data into the watermark, generating a stagger watermark. The decoy key is used to hide the stagger watermark into the cover image, generating a stagger image. Upon being coerced, the victim will only disclose the decoy key and claim that there is a watermark embedded in the cover image. In this way, sensitive data can be protected. This is a design overview. We use embedded sensors to enter keys. This is because small screen in wearable devices is not convenient to input keys. Then, for the hiding process, as I mentioned before, 
secret data are first hidden in watermark, generating a staggered watermark. Then this staggered watermark is hidden in cover image, generating a staggered image. For the details, when entering the case, we utilize embedded sensor to input case. To be more specific, we use gyroscope to enter the case. Gyroscope is used to measure the rotation rate of x, y, and z axis. Therefore, we can calculate the degree in a fixed time interval and use this value as the case. Compared to design a keyboard in wearable devices, this scheme is most suitable and convenient for users since they only need to rotate their wrist. The second is about user authentication. In mobileware, user can choose to extract stagger watermark or secret data. Therefore, we need a mechanism to decide what content to display after user enters the case. This is our scheme about how we perform user authentication. The user is required to enter the decoy key first. And if the decoy key is correct, mobileware will wait for a reasonable short time. During this time interval, the user can enter the true key. And if the true key is entered within this period and it is correct, the secret sensitive data will be displayed. Otherwise, only the stagger watermark will be displayed. Upon being coerced, the victim will be disclosed the decoy key. And with the decoy key, the attacker will be able to see the extracted stagger watermark but he will not notice the existence of the hidden sensitive data. Although there is a short delay after entering the decoy key. This can be simply denied as system delay due to the limited computational capability of wearable devices. For the hiding part, we use the LSB technique to hide sensitive data, which I already introduced before. The next part is the security analysis. In security analysis, we show that the attacker can only detect the stagger watermark is hidden in the cover image by performing coercive attack. But he cannot identify the existence of sensitive data hidden in the stagger watermark. Then so we implement the mobileware in an LGG watch, which is equipped with the 500 and the 12 megabytes memory and the four gigabytes flash storage. The system we use is Android Wear 2. We use the gyroscope to enter the case. We then evaluate the mobile wear in two aspects, PSNR value and the processing time for hiding and extracting sensitive data. PSNR value represents the ratio between the maximum possible power of the signal and the power of the noise. Higher PSNR value indicates good image quality. PSNR can be calculated as follows. To observe how different lengths of secret data can affect the PSNR of stagger image and the stagger watermark, we first had secret data with lengths of 20, 40, and 60 bytes in watermark. The stagger watermark is hidden in cover image. We calculate the PSNR value respectively. From the results, we can detect that first, a longer secret data will result in a lower PSNR value, which indicates a bad image quality. This is because a longer secret data will need more least significant bits to store, which increases the noise ratio. Second, the PSNR value is about 30, which indicates the image quality is acceptable. Next, we compare the time to hide data and extract data with different secret data lengths. From the results, we can observe that first, longer secret data will need more time to hide and extract. This is because longer secret data will need more, more bits to store, which increases the time of hiding and extracting. Second, extracting secret data is slower than hiding data. This is because when hiding the secret data, we add two flags to indicate the beginning and the end of the secret data. 
when extracting the secret data, they continuously check the beginning flag and the end flag of secret data. This is why extracting data is more expensive than hiding data. We also calculate the processing time with different sizes of cover image and watermark. We first fix the secret data length as 20 bytes, then measure the process time with different sizes of cover image and watermark. In this figure, X axis represents the size of watermark and the cover image. For example, 101 means the watermark is 10 kilobytes and the cover image is one megabyte. We have two conclusions. The first one is we can detect that the process time increases with the increase of the size of cover image and the watermark. This is because larger image requires more space and the time to be processed. The second conclusion is the time for extracting the secret data is more than that for having them. The reason is same as the previous one. The next part is the discussion. The, fir the first one is about the payload of the mobile wear. We can do a simple analysis. Suppose the size of cover image is n pixels. Each pixel contains four bytes. Each byte can hide one bit. Then the maximum size of watermark it can hide is n over two bytes. The maximum length of secret data it can hide is n over 16 bytes. In order to increase the payload, we can use more least significant bits to hide secret data. But this will definitely decrease the image quality. How to balance the payload and the image quality is left to the future work. The second is about the deniability compromise in memory. Since mobileware relies, relies on memory to do some calculations, therefore, secret data may leave traces in memory. To mitigate this problem, device owner can power off the device after hiding and extracting the sensitive data. Another solution is to use the hardware isolation technique, such as ARM Trust Zone. The third problem is about defending against uh, multi snapshot adversary. Deniability could be compromised if attacker can have multiple access to the device. If the secret data is updated, the attacker can detect the changes by analyzing the stable image. A potential solution could be, each time when sensitive data are modified, new version of data will be embedded into a new cover image and a watermark. The last problem is about data corruptions. LSB is vulnerable to image cutting and cropping attack. A potential solution to mitigate this problem is to back up the data periodically. We also have a simple demo of the mobileware. As you can see in the screen, this is a cover image and this is a watermark image we use. The secret data we use is hello. So the first demo is the hiding secret data. Since the smartwatch is not convenient to choose image and enter text, therefore we hard coded the image in the code. This is a simple interface. The top button is used to in input the password. The bottom button is used to embed the secret data. And now you will rotate the watch to input the public password. And as you can see, the pass public password is 57326. And then you start to enter the secret password. And as you can see, the secret password is 57332. And now you click the embed button and the stable cover image will be displayed.
The second demo is to show how to extract the sensitive data. We first enter the public password. And you can see the public password is 57326. And after you click the extract button, you will see that there is a timer start to count. And now we will use the secret password during during 20 seconds. And now you can see that the secret password is 57332. And uh, and after you extract, the sensitive data will be displayed. In the last demo, we simulate a situation where the device owner is coerced. In this scenario, the user only needs to enter the public password and wait 20 seconds. Only the second watermark will be displayed. And you can see the public password is 57326. And uh, we click the extract button and uh, it will wait for 20 seconds. And uh, after 20 seconds, only the second watermark will be displayed. In this way, sensitive data can be protected. And uh, there is one thing I need to mention. Since this is a demo video, so I make the timer visible. But in real world, the timer should be invisible. Otherwise, the attacker may guess uh, there are some hidden data stored in the image. And thank you. This is all my presentation. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jing Changlin from uh, University of Science and Technology of China. Uh, my presentation is about recent advances in the uh, web PKI and uh, technical changes in the uh, SCMS. This work uh, was finished by Yun Kun Wu, Xiao Kun Zhang, Ya Jin Tang, Jinya Liu, Liang Huang, and me, Jing Changlin, and also Xu Hua Bao. Uh, let's start from PKI, uh, public key infrastructure. Uh, PKI provides security services uh, such as confidentiality, authentication, data integrity, and non uh, PKI provides security services by using certificate. A certificate is a document signed by a trusted uh, certification authority. In order to use the certificate, uh, PKI client need to verify the certificate uh, uh, they need to uh, verify the CH signature, they need to check the certificate's revocation status. And today, PKI has been used every day at the wheel, especially by HTTPS and TLS. HTTPS and TLS uh, they are the most uh, popular application of PKI. Uh, in this paper, we call the uh, PKI to sign certificate for HTTPS and TLS. We call them the Web PKI. In the uh, Web PKI, a uh, certificate bind a uh, dominant to a key pair hold by the website. Then a browser can uh, verify the certificate and establish a 
secure TLS instruction between the website and the browser. Uh, I would like to say uh, today, uh, uh, TLS HTTPS has been uh, more, more widely used. So, as the PKI has been more and more widely used, there are some different design, there are some new design uh, are proposed, uh, different from, from the original design uh, about uh, 40 years ago. There are two uh, different uh, advances. Uh, the first one is called uh, certificate transparency, and the second one is uh, push based certificate notification. Uh, certificate transparency is proposed to uh, prevent uh, fraudulent certificate. Uh, fraudulent certificate is a verifiable certificate, but uh, it contains incorrect uh, information, and this. Uh, certificate is signed by a compromised CA and, and have, it, it has a very uh, CA signature. And there are similar uh, fraudulent certificate security incidents in the real world and they are uh, signed by some, they are launched by some millimeter attackers. Uh, CT has become an uh, Internet RFC standard in 2013. Uh, this is the original design of the web PKI, a CSN certificate for a website. Then the website will send a certificate to the browser. browser the, the, the browser will verify the certificate and then establish the TLS uh, section between the uh, website and the browser. But after the CT uh, is introduced, there are uh, different uh, components. Uh, uh, there are uh, uh, log server, monitor, auditor. Uh, in a CT enable uh, with PKI, uh, each certificate uh, is uh, recorded in uh, the log server. Then uh, the monitor can uh, search certificate among the uh, certificate in the local server and then they can find, uh, they can detect any uh, fraudulent certificate. And the uh, auditor is designed to uh, ensure the correct behavior of the local server. And the second one is push based certificate application. Uh, in the original PKI design, uh, certificate notification status checking is uh, finished by a CRLR, certificate notification list, and online certificate status protocol, uh, OSP. But there are uh, there has uh, a shortcoming, and that's uh, a browser uh, had to uh, launch some additional correction to download the CIL to download the OCSP message to check the uh, TS server certificate uh, vacation status. It's introduced uh, an uh, unexpected uh, delay and degrade the uh, uh, efficiency. So, push best certificate application yeah, is, uh, is introduced. Uh, the first one is called uh, OSSP Stabling. Uh, OSSP Stabling, uh, stabling uh, is the net um, an OSSP response is sent from the website actively to browser. Then, so, the browser uh, does not need to download the OSSP response by itself. <laughs> And also, there are some um, browser uh, manufacturer um, solution, uh, sometimes called CRL set, one CRL or CRL line, or let's remark. And this means that uh, the browser manufacturer uh, will collect 
all uh, the questions that has data for all possible uh, certificate. Then they, they, they sign them into an, uh, a shared file and broadcast to, to all browsers. Uh, in such kind of design, uh, the browser and um, do not need any additional collection to download the replication status data. And then the, the uh, performance is improved. And so there are two uh, advances in a web API. The first one is uh, the certificate transparency uh, to improve the uh, trustworthiness. And the second one is the post-based certificate application to improve efficiency. And let's go to the SCMS. SCMS is a special PKI uh, designed for uh, V2V communication, uh, vehicle to vehicle communication. Uh, in HCMS, each vehicle will hold a uh, certificate and also uh, its uh, primary key. Then the vehicle uh, can send messages uh, broadcast among vehicles. But the uh, most different between the web PKI is that um, each vehicle will hold 20 or 30 or 40 uh, simultaneously valid uh, shouldering certificate for every week. And the vehicle uh, will apply for a uh, shouldering certificate uh, in a batch for one or two or three years. And this means that uh, a vehicle will apply for uh, several thousand uh, shouldering uh, certificates in a batch. Here, uh, I would like to uh, say uh, shouldering certificate it, it is used to protect the users against the vehicle checking. Mm -hmm. During the uh, uh, V2V communication, uh, each vehicle will uh, frequent, uh, frequently uh, change the uh, shouldering certificate uh, very, very uh, frequently to uh, uh, prevent uh, vehicle checking attack. Uh, so uh, here comes our question. Um, we would like to say uh, certificate transparency and push best certificate application uh, introduced as the web PKI uh, are used uh, uh, more and more widely. So do we need to consider uh, such kind of uh, technical changes in SCMS? We, we can find the timeline. Uh, SCMS uh, was uh, proposed and, and published uh, uh, about uh, 2013. Uh, we, we can find that the city, uh, city was, uh, uh, city become an uh, international standard in 2013, and OCSP stepping. Uh, become a standard in uh, 2011 and 2016 and uh, mm, the best uh, uh, CILO uh, was uh, uh, proposed in uh, after uh, 2013. So this different kind of, of design may be uh, necessary in SMS. So let's uh, start the uh, uh, document uh, analysis. Uh, first one, are uh, fraudulent certificates possible in STMS? The answer is yes. Because there is no perfect system. Uh, since the CA of the web PKI uh, could be compromised, could be intruded, the CA of SCMS uh, also can be uh, intuited, can be compromised sometimes. 
So, uh, fraudulent statement uh, certificate uh, are possible. Yeah, are really possible. So, we also need a selection to prevent or detect a fraudulent certificate in SMS. And the second question, do we need to improve the efficiency of certificate application status checking in uh, way to way uh, communication? Of course, the, 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 answer, the, the, the answer is yes. Because uh, efficiency is more imperative in SMS, more important in SMS than HTTPS and uh, TLS, because v 2 a communication is uh, very uh, delay sensitive. So we also need a uh, solution to eliminate uh, the additional corrections for uh, certificate location status checking. Uh, in in SMS. Uh, so let's go to the 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 the, the, the question. Uh, to ejecting uh HTTPS TLS solution uh work for SMS. For example, the uh, certificate transparency uh does certificate transparency work well for SMS? Does uh currently a uh, current uh Push best certificate application solution uh, work well for SMS? Our answer is no. Let's go to an analysis. Uh, first, uh, uh, certificate transparency uh, according to the RFC standard uh, in a city, all uh, TLS server certificate are uh, recorded in publicly uh, visible log server. Then, a uh, fraudulent certificate will be detected by the website because a uh, uh, fraudulent certificate will bind a domain name uh, and a uh, uh, key pair hold by the attacker. But the domain owner will finally uh, detect such kind of fraudulent certificate in the local server because all certificates are recorded in the local server. So every website will find uh, their own certificate and, and then they will uh, detect the fraudulent certificate among them. But such kind of design uh, do not work well in SMS because in SMS all certificates are pseudoing pseudoing certificate. There is no any meaningful identity, no any meaningful identifier in the certificate. Uh, no, there are pseudoing certificate. Uh, uh, it, it cannot be. It, explicitly linked to any vehicle, otherwise vehicle uh, checking attacker uh, are possible. So nobody will detect fraudulent certificate. Even their fraudulent certificate has been uh, recorded in log server, but, but no, nobody can, uh, can, can find them, nobody can detect them. Uh, the analysis about push based certificate uh, replication. Uh, the first one uh, also is pre stabling uh, does not work in SMS. Because in the web API, the OSSP uh, response are uh, 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 downloaded by the website in advance, then the, the, the website will send the OSSP response to the uh, browser in TLS uh, negotiation. But in V2V uh, communication, this means that the, the, the each vehicle uh, has to download the uh, OSSP response by itself every day or every week. But uh, the, 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 the vehicle uh, uh, with way communication device are usually uh, offline. They only uh, has some um, shock light with way communications. So uh, it's impossible for, for, for each vehicle to contact the CA to uh, uh, in advance download the uh, OSSP response 
So, so, so also SP is stable in desktop work via in uh, SMS. And let's go to the uh, browser and manufacture solution. Uh, first, uh, um, CRS set and one CRL. Uh, in um, CRS set and one CRL, and they are not the uh, CRL files uh, generated by um, browser manufacturer. But I have to say, currently, uh, CRL set and one CRL do not cover all TLS server certificate in the web PKI. Um, and they, they has such kind of design is to reduce the size of CR, otherwise the, the CR will become very, very large. So CR and um, regular CR and um, OCSP, uh, you still necessary sometimes. The, this means that the browser had to sometimes download uh, the CR and OCSP by itself. So it, it, it cannot be directly used in SMS. And also, let's go to the CI uh, light and let's look up. Uh, these two solutions, uh, they are efficient data structure uh, to reduce the size of CIL, but they cover all TLS server certificate in the web PI. And but I would like to say um, such kind of design um, also um, do not work well uh, in SMS. Let, let's go to the analysis. Uh, first, uh, um, I would like to uh, talk about the uh, correct model of uh, children in SMS. First, in the uh, PKI, uh, there are about uh, 12 million uh, remote certificate and about um, 30, 30 million uh, unremark uh, certificates. But in SMS, the number of users or, or we could say the number of vehicles is about 10 times of the number of website. So it, it, it's about uh, 20 million vehicles in the world. So the number of certificate will 10,000 times because I, I, I just uh, talking about the number of student certificate because the, the vehicle uh, had to frequently change the uh, student certificate uh, against the uh, vehicle checking attack. In fact, in current uh, SCMS, uh, they, 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 they had their own uh, design. Uh, they, 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 they call it, it is called a linkage based replication uh, to reduce the size of CIL about the, the, the from uh, 1000 uh, uh, bytes to only one byte. Uh, because uh, in a uh, linkage based CIL, one in try in the CIL will be presented uh, all and expire but revoke children certificate apply uh, for in a batch. Uh, this means that uh, one in try uh, in the CIL had can be extended to uh, log talk identifier, uh, 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 log talk uh, certificate identifier. Then the vehicle can check the uh, the clock certificate uh, uh, can help with, uh, with, with, with such kind of untry. Uh, but, so I have to say, uh, linkage based uh, replication is less solid in SMS because it can uh, uh, greatly uh, reduce the size of CI uh, from, mm, it, it's about 1,000 or 7,000 times. Uh, so the the, uh, the size of CIL uh, after link space uh, replication has been uh, used, uh, the, the the size of CIL will about uh, ten times compared with uh, the CIL in web PKI because the number of vehicles uh, is ten times of the number of uh, website. But I have to say link space uh, replication is not enough. Uh, according to the web PKI uh, experience, uh, the first one is to improve the efficiency. We had to, uh, we we need push best, uh, 
good space on the vacation time, and also to reduce the size of Seattle uh, more. Uh, 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 because currently the the the, the Seattle Seattle site is still uh, much uh, more large than the Seattle in our PI. So let's go to the efficiency uh, data structure design. And the first one is uh, Seattle Light. Uh, it's proposed in uh, 2017. Uh, CRI uh, utilizes a uh, brown filter uh, cascade to encode uh, both remote and unremote uh, certificate into a uh, uh, efficient data structure. But it does not work with linked based notification because CRI, uh, after, uh, after they encoded after the certif certificate identifier uh, has been encoded into the brown filter, the CRI cannot recover the exact uh, certificate identifiers. But uh, links based notification needs such kind of uh, explicit uh, uh, identifier. And the uh, second one, uh, that's uh, literally bulk. Uh, it was uh, proposed uh, in uh, 2020 uh, in uh, let's remember uh, uh, one bit in Seattle uh, can uh, represent one rebox certificate and but it also um, does not uh, work very well you know, with uh, liquid based notification uh, because uh, in uh, let's remember one in China uh, they present only one certificate, but in the best revocation, uh, uh, one in China uh, represent one batch of certificate. And this means that uh, the, in, in, in that revocation, uh, the, the, the certificate uh, number is a sequence of uh, incremental uh, uh, intelligence. But in linked based replication, they are the numbers. Uh, the the, the number is uh, is crossing all uh, by uh, two linkage menus. In, in such kind of design, they can they 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 they, 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 they have such design is to uh, prevent uh, uh, vehicle chicken attacks. So. This means that uh, such kind of design, such kind of efficiency, uh, efficient data structure design of CRL cannot work well with linked based location. Uh, finally, that's our conclusion. Uh, first, uh, certificate dependency and post based uh, certificate location are necessarily um, less, less, less than, than from the real world. And within the same requirement will appear as as SMS and uh, deploy uh, in the future. But existing solution for what PKI does work for SMS and uh, with way uh, communications. So um, we uh, in the future uh, we have to work for more suitable solution for SSMS. Mm, that's all. Thank you. Hello from the AI team. We have a great new feature in the AI Compass that you can use. Upvote your favorite presentations to show appreciation and respect the best presenters. Open up the AI Compass, go to the program, find the presentation you want to upvote and hit the thumbs up button. It's that simple.